Welcome back to another episode of the Old Fashioned Real Estate Show. This is Jeff Holst. That's Brian Leverage. And in this episode, we're going to cover a little bit of a painful topic. How to deliver bad news to investors. Yeah, and we're going to do that by sharing a deal that we did that was no bueno. And we're going to do it right after this. Welcome to the Old Fashioned Real Estate Show, where hosts Brian Leverage and Jeffrey Holst for our Old Fashioned Real Estate Advice. Brian, have you ever had a deal that went wrong? Yes. Really? Me too. I wonder if it's the same deal. <laughs> well, um, I, to be fair, I've had um, a lot three. Of no, three really yeah. that didn't go like we planned. Fortunately for me, I was a sole investor in two of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one was with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, all right. So uh, as you may know, if you follow the show, um, sometimes Brian and I syndicate and, you know, syndication, we did a whole episode about. So if you want to know more about that, that's what that is. But, um, but, but syndication in the short form is when we pool investors' money together to buy a piece of real estate. So about three, four years ago now? Four years, maybe? Yeah, just over four years. Yeah. We bought a commercial strip center here in town. Bought it at a great price, really mm -hmm. low. Yeah. You know, I, and there was a couple components to this thing that really made it a great deal. Uh, the first was our, our price per square foot was super low. Um, there was a caveat though, and the caveat was is this was a land lease. Right. Meaning, we didn't you know, know we, were, we were buying the improvements, but not, not the ground on which this thing sat. Yeah, so the short version is the deal was a 30,000-ish square foot uh, retail shopping center. Um, and the land lease only had about 21 years. 21 years left on the lease, which meant that at the end of 21 years, the property would revert to the landowner. Yeah, and, and the so, loan was for 20, right? Yeah, so we, we would have had 20, like a year of a 20, free and clear ownership, yeah, 20, maybe. 20-year 20 loan. And, um, and of course, you know, that suppresses the value dramatically. And so as a result, we were able to put this thing under contract for a very low price per square foot. Um, subsequent to that, Brian and I were able to negotiate with the landowner to extend the lease for 60 years. Yeah. So all of a sudden the property was worth a lot more. And the guy, the owner of the land literally said to us, if you buy this, I'll extend the lease. So the value was, was all us from the beginning. Yeah. And, and we estimated that, that in, in fact, the appraisal showed that that improved the value by about $700,000. Mm -hmm having that additional uh, 40 years on the lease. Yeah, exactly. And so right from the get-go, we thought this is a really good deal. And, and it cash flowed right out of the gate. I mean, it had a vacancy, 30% 30, 30 vacancy. We had a couple of vacancies, yeah. yeah. Seven suites, uh, we had two vacant units out of the gate, and then we ended up, yeah, yes. filling those. I mean, it, yeah, it, it took was a also long time. It yeah, was... so the pandemic hit, and it took us quite a long time to fill it. And in fact, um, uh, we started out trying to lease them up ourselves. No. Right? We had a big sign out front, and uh, you know we, were, we had the number, our, a phone number on it. You know, call us and we'll lease the space. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> mistake number one, <laughs> right? We didn't bring in uh, professional realtors to do it. We made, we learned our lesson on that, um, but it still worked. You know, the deal um, continued to cash flow. And eventually we got our commercial real estate leasing agents involved and were able to fill yeah. the space up. And ultimately we were able to sell the property for a double, roughly double, double what, what we, we paid, paid for. It. Double what we paid for it. So in under three years. Yeah. So and I mean, there was cash flow from operations that was yeah, distributed and, in that interim. In, in fact, because of the le the way leverage works, um, the investors actually, you know, if they put in a hundred thousand, they got like two hundred thousand back. Like basically double their money yeah. in less than three years, which is an incredibly good return. And we were super happy with this return. So I know you're thinking now, like, where do we screw yeah, up? Yeah, what, 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 what went wrong? <laughs> and uh, tax this, liability. Yeah, this is where it gets painful. So now, listen, when you sell a piece of property, we all know that there's a tax consequence to that capital gains tax, things like that. Um, in this case, um, most of those taxes are passed on in the form of, of a 
yeah. pass through gains to the investors. Well, the IRS treats LLCs as a partnership, right? right? Meaning that the losses and the gains, for that matter, flow through well, directly to the investor. Just right? to be clear, I mean, you can choose it. to make it pass through or not. Yeah. We had elected to make it a pass through entity. So the investors were responsible for their federal tax. And in Tennessee, we don't actually have a state income tax. So Except we do on business. Yeah, <laughs> we do. And Dirty little secret, yeah. unfortunately. So, and we knew about that. So we called our CPA and mm -hmm. we said, hey, you know, we're selling this property. This is what we netted out. Here's the deal. How much money should we hold back for when we get that tax bill? Yeah. And we decided to hold back about, what, $20,000? $25,000. And we thought that the liability was going to be $20,000. Yes. So we held back a little bit more just to be safe. And then we got the tax bill. We did. So we didn't uh, account for the fact that uh, there is uh, essentially the sale of a property here is treated um, as, not as capital gains, but as, per income. Se, but as income, right? So we had an unrealized gain that we failed to account for in, in that. And um, the tax bill ended up being almost double what we'd set aside. Right. So, Actually, it was a little bit more than double. Yeah. 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 So, so by about three grand, I yeah, know, because yeah. I, I paid it. Yeah. So. so so what happened was we got the um, tax bill and we thought this can't be right. We confirmed with our CPA in advance. Um, we started the process to investigate to see if it was correct. Um, and then realized pretty quickly that if we didn't pay it, we would start accumulating penalties and interest. Mm -hmm. So Brian actually paid it himself. Loaned the money to yeah. the company, yeah. to be clear. Right, right. loan the money to the company and then the company paid it. But, but the point is we didn't want to go back to our investors and ask for a capital call when we didn't even know if it was right. Right. Um, it took about gee, um, like nine, months. Yeah, nine months, yeah. I was going to say, to actually um, figure out what was going on. And it turns out we owed the money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which if you have a $50,000 bill and you only have $25,000 in your account and you've already distributed the money to everyone is kind of problematic. No. So this is where delivering tough news kind of yeah, comes in, exactly. right? You know, the first lesson here is just be upfront about it. Nobody likes getting bad news, right? There, but there's no reason to sort of dance around and sugarcoat it because then that sort of makes things look right. worse it, than they really were. At it, the end of the day on this deal, um, everybody owed, which by the way, we owned half of the deal yeah. on our own. So, so it's not like the investors were taking 100% of this tax Right, bite. so we're talking about $12,000 that we had to get back yeah. from our investors. So it's not an enormous amount of money, but when you've been paid now almost a year previous, yeah. and you're going, okay, now I need to give money back on something that I've already yeah. thought I've, you know, I've accumulated this profit and I've maybe they spent the money. It is a little bit painful, but we did a couple of things that I think was right. And this is the part that we think is really valuable for you. The first thing we did as soon as we found out that we were wrong, we told everyone. Like we literally picked up the phone and called every investor and said, hey, we're looking into it. We're not sure if it's right or not, but we got this tax bill. We set aside this, this amount and this is what the bill was. And then we told them we're going to go ahead and cover the bill while we investigate. So we just told them that up front. And so then flash forward nine months when we actually realized that, that the money was owed, it became a situation where we were able to go back to those investors and be like, hey, you know, we, we told you this might be a case. Here's how much you owe. And we just gave them the exact amount. We showed them the exact amount we withheld, the exact amount we paid, their percentage of that amount. And uh, it went pretty well, mm -hmm. actually. And, and that's the lesson. It was painful. I mean, believe me, we did not want to make those calls. Both rounds of calls were painful. But it turns out, if you're upfront and straightforward with people, they're kind of okay with it. I mean, they respect it. And, and um, I think every single one of those investors is still investing with us. Um, I'm pretty sure, actually. They all, they all are, or at least looking at our deals, and no one seems to have any hard feelings. And and I think this is a lesson for all of your real estate stuff. Because, you know, if, you, um, if you're trying to rent to some money or you're trying to buy a property, if you're doing due diligence and you suddenly realize, yeah, this deal isn't going to work, uh, you need to go back to the seller right away and just say, hey, here's what the problem is. Here's why it doesn't work. And whenever you do that, if you're being reasonable, it usually works out pretty well. Yeah. So do you have any more insight on that, Brian? Any thoughts, concerns? No, I mean, I think, again, just reiterating what I said earlier is nobody likes to get bad news, right? You, know, I mean, you don't sit here waiting for it to happen or wishing right. on it. But, you know, that doesn't 
mean that you don't try to be empathetic to people and, and communicating that and everything else, but just be upfront and be honest about it. Yep. Mistakes do happen, but mistakes also present an opportunity to grow from and learn, right? Yeah. And that's definitely what I would and, say applied here to us. And of course the, yeah, and so we're not making that mistake again, right? Yeah. Like we're not, we're just not gonna make that mistake again. But also, um, it doesn't hurt that, you know, instead of getting 200% their money back, they got 199% of their money back. Yeah. You know, it's not like the investors were really in a bad spot over it. Uh, but at the same time, it would have been way better had we held back more. And I think that's actually a lesson for all of your real estate investing. It's something that Brian taught me, actually. I don't know if you know this or not, but um, before partnering with Brian, I, I often would cut my operating reserves a little bit more narrow than I should and figure out it'll probably be fine. Brian's always been like, no, we need to have way more money than we think, which has saved our butt, right? Because we've been in an inflationary environment where costs have gone up a lot more than we expected. I mean, who would have thought that lumber prices would skyrocket like they did last year? No, yeah. I mean, now they've come down some, but like you still had- But then plastics and everything yeah. else have yeah. tripled, yeah. right? So, so, so no one would have would have thought that, you know, a couple of years ago that, that we'd be paying what we're paying for, for materials. And if you're buying stuff and putting together a renovation budget and you don't have a healthy operating reserve, that could be a real problem. And it's the same thing here. If we had reserved and held back more money, it would have solved the problem. And so lesson learned. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think our CPA probably learned a lesson too, which yeah. is mm, dig in a little bit more yeah. before you give an estimate. Um, but you know, it is one of those things. And uh, at the end of the day, if you're ever facing, even outside of your real estate career, if you're ever facing a situation where you screwed something up, just be upfront and honest about it because it's going to minimize the impact. Well, and you also have a fiduciary responsibility to your investors. <laughs> For sure you do. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that little bit of information as well. Right, right. But I think that it goes without saying that yeah. we do respect our investors' yeah. money. In fact, I've often said I would much rather lose my own money than someone else's. Exactly. 100%. And with that... I hope you come back next week for an amazing episode. Oh, we have some great interviews coming up too, so be sure to keep checking back. And uh, I know we haven't been as consistent the last few months. Wild. As, yes. Well, <laughs> you know, let, let's call it like it is. We're lazy. Um, <laughs> well, at least when it comes to filming the show, not on everything else. But we really appreciate you watching. And as always, if you're liking our content, be sure to share it. Um, give us the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and do all those amazing things. Thanks so much. Thank you.